So thanks a lot, Andy, for the nice introduction. And it was interesting to see the presentations this morning and how several examples were used in different ways a couple of times by different presenters. And a little heads up, some examples will come up now again, but I promise you I used them to make a little bit of a different point than the one we have seen this morning, actually. So imagine somebody asks you to paint a picture or to draw a picture of a bird that is a little bit red with white and has a very short beak. And depending on your skill, you might come up with something that looks like this. I probably wouldn't be able to, but if you're a good drawer, you can actually do that. Now, if you ask a computer the same question, back in the days, a computer would not really know what to do with it. It wouldn't even understand the sentence. It wouldn't understand what you want from it. But nowadays, a computer might come up with something like this. And it almost looks like a, like a real photo photography, almost. And it's not a picture, of course, which the computer has found somewhere on the internet. It's a picture the computer has actually created by itself, as we have seen this morning. So it was able to understand the text, it was able to understand what we want from it, find the keywords in there, and create something entirely new. And this is actually quite fascina fascinating and based on this technology which is called generative artificial intelligence. So a technology which you can use to create new content based on some input. And now this is a very interesting and funny application actually, but it can also be used for other purposes. If we look at aircraft, for example, designers or engineers have asked similar tools to actually develop a concept for the design of a drone which has four propellers, and which is as light and as stable as possible. And this was the result. So what you can see here, actually, is the computer, the machine, iterating through many different possible design concepts. And it can do so because it also has less resource constraints in that sense than we humans do. And the result it actually found in the end, and the humans have chosen out of a set of machine-generated possibilities was actually lighter, as stable and lighter than anything a human has created before. So the machine did actually a better job than a human has done before. And there are more examples. This, what you can see here, is the wall inside of an airplane, so separating first class from business class or business from economy or so. And on the left side, you see um, a wall which has been designed by a human a plain wall, and on the right side, you see a wall which has been designed by a machine. And again, it's as stable as the human-designed wall, but it's 40% lighter than what any human has created beforehand. And lighter in air travel is actually quite good because it means less fuel consumption and less CO2 emissions in the end. And um, I think these applications are quite fascinating, and they seem quite creative, actually, what they're, what they're coming up with with here. And the question is, is it creative or not? Well, we had some opinions this morning. Um, it's a big question. Um, but I think actually the most important part is, and it brings me to the topic of my presentation today, that AI, AI is maybe not really creative on its own. Maybe it can be a little bit. But the biggest potential lies in AI augmenting human creativity. So what do I mean with that? Or what do we mean with that in general is that AI has certain skills where it's I believe, superior to humans. If you think about when you have a lot of data in a spreadsheet, a lot of variables, a lot of um, rows, our brain is not really able to construct meaning out of that very fast, while an AI thrives on it and can generate new insights based on that. On the other side, we have humans which have certain skills where we are, in my opinion, clearly superior to ma machines. And what is this, actually? I believe it's on deciding what we should actually do. What should we innovate for? To really think about what has value in the real world. Where should we, um, does that our, do our current targets make sense? Questioning targets of others. Are we really heading for the right direction? I think this needs to come from the human. So to direct the eye in a specific direction. Another way how AI can augment human intelligence or human creativity, I think, is shown here, which is a knowledge graph. And what you see here, basically, is the interactions between different molecules, different diseases, different organisms. 
Maybe Elif will make, be able to make more sense out of it than I can, working for Roche. <laughs> but um, in the end, this knowledge graph was created by an artificial intelligence automatically as well. And it went through literal databases, it went to material data databases and created this. And why does this have value? Well, it's because for drug research, it's very important to be aware of all of these interactions. For a drug researcher to control, for example, for side effects and so on, it needs to be important to be aware of these things. And now this could have also been human created. However, it would have taken a human much more time to come up with something like that. But now with AI, it can be automatically created so the human can take a look at it and actually spend more time on applying and using the information instead of gathering it. And I believe this shows another very important capability of AI, not only to analyze a large amount of data, but to summarize it for us and to present it to us in a meaningful way so we can spend more time on actually more value generating activities than just collecting and gathering data together. Yeah. Now that we've talked, and I come back to this example, about how AI can augment human creativity, the question is also where lie its limitations. And I talked a little bit about this earlier already. So AI is again really good, and in this example, we asked the AI to actually design an airplane to reduce CO2 emissions. And it did an excellent job here again. It designed something that was lighter and more efficient than a human would have done. Now, if you're asking human to reduce CO2 emissions from air travel, the human might say like, well, yeah, we can improve the design, but actually a more effective way to do it is if we don't fly at all. So the human could criticize your target actually and challenge it and say like, well, we should have go, go another direction. Why don't we make train travel more effective? Why don't we ask people to use video conferencing more? Because these are more effective strategies. And this is what I really believe is a difference. And um, I believe that humans need to come up with, of course, supported by machines with intelligent target, but then use the machines to go in the right direction to develop new and good ideas. Now we've talked how AI can talked about how AI can augment human creativity, what its limitations are. But I believe there's also a third aspect we have to consider that there are some things we humans need to do in order to develop new ideas where we don't really need AI for. So if you think about activities like this, and studies have actually shown that so simple activities like this actually are very valuable for developing new ideas. Sometimes it's just important to stop, to just do something else, do nothing, going for a walk or something like that to come up with something new. You all know it, maybe the best idea comes in the middle of the night or when you're standing under the shower or something. Interacting with other people, learning new insights, getting to know new people can help you. Um, gathering more knowledge, which at some point turns out relevant for you in your job. Learning new skill like language has proven to lead to new ideas in the long run, or just traveling and having new experience. You learn a lot of new things there. In the beginning, it might not seem so relevant to you maybe, but at some point you see an association and suddenly it all makes sense and adds up together. And you just increase the likelihood that you stumble up over something that is valuable for you if you engage in such activities every now and then. And all of these activities, I think this is really interesting, are activities where we don't really want AI. AI cannot really support them so, so well. It's actually good if we unwind without technology sometimes, or if you talk to a person without the help of technology. So I believe also that one of the biggest contributions AI can make for human creativity, actually, is if it saves us time, so we have more time for doing such type of things, to engage with other people and so on. And this is actually also the leading opinion. So the leading opinion, as many studies have shown, that AI can take over monotonous, repetitive tasks from us. And I also believe in that. We're talking about the four-day work week, we're talking about giving us two weeks back per year, so we have more time for other activities. And this potential certainly exists. However, I would be a little bit more careful, because only if AI saves us time for some activities, doesn't necessarily mean that we have more time actually in the end, because I believe there are also other effects which come into play. Now, what you see here is actually how we, or people in the US, how much time they spent in front of screens between 2003 and 2015, that's the black line. So we 
And it's no surprise, we spend more and more time in front of screens, watching TV, gaming, in front of our computers, interacting with smartphones. And certainly, spending more time in front of screens comes at the cost of time spent on other activities, as you see, because we only have those 24 hours every day. And in this case, you see active leisure time, so socializing, reading, writing, arts and crafts has decreased in the same time period. So digital technologies in general draw ever more on our attention and on our time at the cost of other activities. And there's actually, this is not a, this is not a coincidence, it's actually happening on purpose, because, and there's a word for it, which is called addictive design, which is a word inside the area of digital technologies that digital technologies are designed in order to keep us engaged as long as possible. If you think, for example, about Netflix, once you watched a specific movie, you get the next recommendation for the next movie. And I recently discovered, actually, Netflix introduced a, a new button, which I thought was quite funny. It basically said, just watch something random. So you don't even know what you're watching. So maybe if the recommendations are not so good, you just click, I watch anything right now or something, yeah. Think of your Instagram feeds, or even your LinkedIn feeds, your Facebook feeds. They are never ending. They are always continuing in order to keep us engaged as long as possible. And even, it has even gone so far that partly those technologies exploit our biological weaknesses. So the like button and other things have been designed, designed in a way to create a little dopamine kick inside of our brains, a little kick, we're getting happy. Somebody likes what I just posted. Okay, maybe I can stay on a little bit longer, keep engaged a little bit longer. And through AI, I actually believe the capabilities of digital technologies to keep us engaged will increase further. They will not decrease, they will increase further because the algorithms, they will know our interests better, they will predict our behaviors better, and thereby can tailor the recommendations to our really personal needs. And also, they can interact with us not only through screens anymore, but in natural language. Think of the Alexa you have at home. You have now suddenly a digital technology everywhere around. So there's certainly the risk also there that through AI, we will spend even more time or too much time or more time than we desire with digital technologies at the cost of other activities. Now, this is a similar way to illustrate it. If you think about the past, we had two types of activities we could spend time on. Time spent with others, interacting, time spent alone, resting, reflecting, maybe even playing a card game by myself or something like that. And all of it was non-screen time in the past, before TVs. And nowadays, what we know, on the one side, we spend more time alone, so the horizontal line is pushed a little bit up. But we also know that we, more, we use more and more digital tools to support our activities, and it's increasing. We spend more and more time in front of screens, and this time is increasing at the cost of time spent on other activities. Now, how will the future look? It's, of course, uncertain, but I believe there are two effects which come into play. The first one is, as I said earlier, AI could free up time that we then spend on off-screen activities, interacting with others, um, spending some time alone, reflecting on writing, or just resting. Or the other effect is that AI could draw even more on our attention and time, and that we b basically dig even more into the digital world. Of course, not every digital, digital supported activity is unimportant for new ideas. There are many actually really important activities or good activities, listening to an inspiring podcast or having a video conference with somebody, an expert from another, conf, from, from another conf, continent, you would usually not be able to talk to. These are really good activities. Still, I would say we have to be careful that there are many activities we can easily put our focus on, which we didn't want in, in, in the beginning, but then the technology drags us into it. And I believe in the future we have to really make sure that we and, and consciously discuss where should this vertical line actually be in the future. Because to develop the best ideas, we probably need the right combination of time spent interacting with others, time spent alone, and time spent using digital technologies. And this is why I changed the conclusion a little bit, which why I say human creativity needs to be augmented with artificial intelligence, but it also needs to be protected of it at the same time. Thank you very much. <laughs>